Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about intravascular imaging in the cath lab today. This is my ninth symposium. I'm very happy to be here. I think every year it gets better and better. I have no disclosures. Uh, you already heard today Dr. Sharma. He presented uh, multiple intravascular imaging trials which showed amazing benefits for the patients, improved uh, not only um, target um, stent thrombosis and other data, also mort uh, improved um, decreased mortality. So in my talk, I wanted to give, um, first of all, an overview of different image modalities, and then we're gonna look at the imaging for PCI guidance. What is the optimal PCI result? And we're going to look at um, imaging criteria to achieve best clinical outcomes. And then I have a couple of slides on um, best resources where we can learn imaging. If you would like to learn base, uh, baseline, uh, some background of imaging, or you can improve your knowledge, there are great resources available. So more than 40 years ago, IBUS was introduced um, and started, we started using this in the cath lab. This is a normal coronary artery and fibrous plug, which deve lesion develops in intima, intima layer. Fibrous plaque has uh, high collagen content. That's why it, it has similar appearance to adventitia, wide breath appearance. This is calcification by IVOS. It has um, bright white features with dark shadowing behind. By IVOS, we can only analyze angle, length, and location. We can classify um, calcification as um, superficial or deep calcification. In the superficial calcification in this picture, um, it's very close to the lumen and uh, deep calcification closer to adventitia. We, don't, we cannot uh, characterize the thickness of calcium. Lipid plug has very low intensity, low collagen content, it absorbs small ultrasound waves and appears um, darker. In many um, cases, we can visualize fibrous cap overlying lipid, while in some cases, we cannot visualize the cap because IBUS doesn't have enough um, resolution to quantify the fibrous cap thickness. It's very important to be able to distinguish between lipid and fibrous plug because lipid plug uh, at the stand age might cause a significant stand dissection. We will look at some cases later. Um, this is thrombus identified by, uh, by IVUS. It's usually a regular, highly attenuated mass protruding into lumen. Um, it's, sometimes it's not easy to differentiate between thrombus and um, um, lipid-rich plaque with a thin cap, thin cap fibrothroma, because Thin cap is not visualized by IVOS. So, what, how can we use IVOS before um, stand before PCI? First of all, we can do um, IVOS can help um, as, um, assess stand length and diameter based on the measurements of um, lumen or vessel size at proximal uh, distal landing zones. And the optimal landing zones, they should be the areas with the largest lumen and the smallest plug burden for optimal outcomes. I was before PCI can also characterize plug morphology. It's, it's a very important step. We, it will help us decide if this lesion needs um, some kind of plug modification. At the site of stenosis and the reference segment, IVOS can help uh, perform all the measurements, minimal lumen area, diameters, vessel area, plug burden. These measurements can be used for assessment of intermediate lesions and help us distinguish between the lesions which, for which we can safely defer revascularization. Uh, for left main, the cutoff is six millimeter square, and for non-left main lesions, it's four millimeter square. Um, recently, over a couple um, last years, we use routinely IVOS for all uh, left main PCIs or OCT. Now, imaging is uh, mandatory. Post PCI stent assessment. First of all, the most, the single most um, important parameter is the stent expansion. 
We can measure this either as a uh, is absolute standard expansion or a re relative uh, reference of the minimal stand area to the reference area. I was, can also help assess stand opposition. Uh, minor stand, stand mal opposition, a gap between the strut and the vessel wall does not require any treatment, but um, stand mal opposition, as shown in the image on the right, um, clearly requires some kind of intervention and can be left like this. Tissue protrusion is a very common finding after stenting, often observed after stent implantation, especially in acute coronary um, syndrome patients. It reduces lumen of the stented vessel and depending on the or severity sometimes might require uh, intervention. Another very important finding in standage dissection is associated with large plug, residual plug burden, calcified plug, or implantation of relatively large stand diameter. So stand sizing is very important. It can be minor, uh, going only through intima, as shown in this image, or it can, it can go through uh, media and even deeper, this is, this is significant dissections. We'll look at this. So one of the trials uh, Dr. Sharma described today, the ultimate trial, um, is the randomized trial which showed uh, benefits of IBIS guidance or compared to angiography guidance. But what I, I think this um, analysis uh, present a very interesting finding that within the IBIS arm, it's actually uh, cases with optimally, optimal PCI. They, uh, they have the, the lowest number of adverse events compared to suboptimal PCI still with IVOS guidance. So what other criteria for optimal PCI by IVOS? First of all, minimal stent area more than five millimeters square or 90% of distal reference, plug burden at stent age less than 50%, and no stage stand age dissection in volume media or lengths more than three millimeters as shown in this, um, in this picture. Near infrared spectroscopy or NIRS is the more recently developed image modality which, is, which allows us to detect the lipid content of coronary lesions. This is a chemogram and it shows lipid as a um, yellow color and fibrous tissue in red. What's um, great about this technology, it gives us just one single number for each lesion. This number is lipid core burden index uh, on a scale from zero to 1,000, and we know exactly um, what is the lipid kind of the lesion, content of the lesion. In this example, in um, modern catheters, we have both IVOS and NIRS in the same catheter. So we can combine benefits of our both image modalities. LCBF for this lesion is uh, 200. This is the maximal area. How can it help in PCI? Maximum LCBI lesions more than 500 are associated with a higher risk of very procedural MI. And maximum LCBI more than 400 is the signature of plaques causing stamium. In the recent Prospect 2 trial, combined IVUS and NIRS help identify vulnerable plaques in patients which have, uh, who have a much higher incidence of MACE in future based on their uh, non-carpet lesions. So maximal CBI more than 324 and plaque burden more than 70 in patients with acute coronary syndrome in their non-carpet lesions uh, resulted in 13% 13 of maize compared to 5% maize in patients with low LCBI and small plug burden. As for example, for this patient who presented with stamia in a different vessel and RCA had non-obstructive lesion with a very high LCBI, more than uh, 500 and um, large plug burden. And um, three years later, he presented with stamia already in, in the same in RCA, but it look, looks very different. Optical coherence thermography uses near infrared light to produce high resolution images um, of the vessel wall. Compared to IVOS, the resolution is 10 to 20% higher. Pullback speed is much faster. 
However, the limitation of OCT is uh, limited tissue penetration. We can only image through two, three millimeters from the lumen compared to 10 millimeters by IVOS. And we also need to clear vessel from the blood. Similar to IVOS, three layer structure of a normal vessel wall. And these are main types of um, lesions by OCT. Looks a little bit different from IVOS. This is very highly high signal homogeneous area fibrous plug. Lipid rich plug has low signal with the fuzzy diffuse border, this fibrous cap, and OCT can measure this fibrous cap thickness and identify those vulnerable lesions, which are described in many trials, including prospect trial. Calcification, we can see the whole calcific deposit. We can even measure the thickness, area. We even published a paper, we measured volume of calcium by measuring uh, thickness uh, area through each one millimeter. Um, this is uh, the illustration compared to, to IVOS, which only gives us reflect uh, reflective surface. This, is, uh, this analysis um, concluded that lesions with calcium score of four and, and calcium score at least four had um, much worse stand expansion compared to lesion calcium is score zero to three. What does it mean, calcium score four? It means that calcium maximum angle more than uh, two quadrants, that calcium thickness is more than 0 0.5 millimeters, and calcium length is uh, more than five millimeters. These are just a few examples uh, by OCT. These are two calcifications with the calcium score only two in this um, case and one and stand expansion more than 90. What's interesting about this calcium angle is actually 360, but if it's thin and not very long, uh, it's not gonna interfere with the stand expansion. And this example of calcium score four um, is uh, uh, resulted in stand, stand, ex stand expansion 60, only 68, which is not, of course, not optimal PCI. OCT can also differentiate between different mechanisms responsible for acute coronary syndrome. And Dr. Sharma already mentioned today that in case of plaque erosion, um, treatment might actually be very different from, from plaque rupture and calcified nodule. Um, deferring stenting becomes more and more popular option. Before PCI, OCT can give us all the measurements, um, the same measurements that I was, luminary um, um, reference, references, um, diameter. We also have co-registration with angiography. And what's really great about OCT, all these numbers, we have them automatically. The moment pullback is done, we have all these measurements, no need to find, um, find minimal lumen area. The same is for post-tent assessment. We have stent expansion, we have minimal stent area, everything is here, co-registered with angio. And um, there is also a very convenient tool to, for stent uh, reconstruction, which allows, which automatically detects uh, malaposed areas. You can see in this picture, a uh, couple red struts in longitudinal area, they actually correspond to malaposed struts in, um, in this cross section. Very convenient, we use this pretty much in every, I think, case with uh, post-tenting. OCT can show even more features. Sometimes some are minor, it's very important to understand which feature is, imp is important clinically or not. This is instant dissection, thrombus, plug protrusion, age dissection, minimal stent area here also shown. Um, a couple slides for using imaging in instant restenosis. Um, we actually, I think this, we use this algorithm in many cases in ISR because it's very important to identify the underlying mechanism, whether it's um, biological mechanism due to neo-intimal hyperplasia or neoatherosclerosis, or it's a mechanical reason for standard expansion. Maybe stent is just um, uh, stent is smaller or was under expanded. Depending on the mechanism and also on the number of stent previously implanted, the treatment will range from a high pressure balloon to another stent layer 
o azrectomy, azrectomy, IVBT or uh, IVL? This is this a very important questions to answer, and uh, this is one of our cases. We used IVUS in this case instead of stenosis for LAD, and I was clearly showed a fibrous plug, a lot of intimal hyperplasia, two stent layers based on these findings. Or we also measured stent um, the vessel vessel size, so stent was well expanded based on these findings. The treatment was only cut in balloon, no additional stent was implanted. And now it's a little bit different case in a calcified and stent stenosis. In this case, we performed IVUS after rotational atherectomy, uh, and this is the result. The, our goal was to identify the mechanism of our ISR, and in this case, we had uh, neoatherosclerosis with calcium pretty much along the whole lesion. So since calcium, um, calcium doesn't allow to see behind, behind calcification, we were not able to see how many stent layers, and it was a little bit hard to define the mechanism in this case. So OCT um, will be able to do that, will be able to see, um, to show us stent struts behind calcium, or even embedded in calcification and could be preferable technique for this kind of cases. This is another illustration of the same lesion with multiple stent layers, which is a little bit challenging to de detect on IVUS. And OCT clearly shows uh, two stent layers uh, in this. So as in many cases, um, we, um, sometimes we, we are thinking which uh, image modality is better because each has its limitations. And uh, is it possible to have, to have both of them in one catheter? The answer is yes. This is the first in human evaluation of novel IVUS OCT hybrid imaging system, which allows simultaneous and core register acquisition IVUS and OCT. We used the system yesterday in a live case. And um, we can see, for example, in this lipid plug, we can measure fibrous cap thickness and the same frame will give us a plug burden and um, plug composition. I think another use of this system is great. It helps to understand better artifacts because artifacts are different in different image modalities. For example, um, sometimes it's really ch challenging to see, uh, um, to decide either it's um, lipid plug on a CT or it's just shadowing by macrophages. And uh, I was clearly shows fibrous plaque, so it means this, are not, this is not lipid. Very interesting also results for post tainting showing uh, malaposition by OCT and uh, all the measurements for the uh, vessel size, which are not available in OCT. So um, this, uh, uh, this system in the study was 20 patients, very small study. The, the system uh, was safe, not associated with any complications, enhanced coronary plug characterization and overall image interpretation and it helped overcome inherent limitation of each single image modalities. This single slide summarizes pretty much all the criteria for optimal PCI, which will help improve um, outcomes for the patients. Minimal stent area more than 5.5 by IVUS, a little bit smaller numbers, always smaller numbers for CT 4.5. Plug burden less than 50% of stand age and no lipid plug there. Dissection only minimal, limited to intima, no medial dissections, no extensive protrusions, and only small malaposition, no gross malaposition, especially associated with stand under expansion. These are very important targets, and um, if pre PCI imaging is, is done, uh, correctly, and I was, and um, uh, imaging is used for stent sizing, also uh, optimal landing zone assessment. Um, all these numbers pretty much will be will be goals will be met. And just a couple quick more slides uh, about the resources available to learn imaging. Um, this it's a great application for iPad to learn IVUS. It has a lot of uh, interesting features, but I think the best one, you can practice your own measurements and compare your own contours with the expert, very interactive tool. 
uh, another app available on both App Store and uh, Andro for Android system. Uh, basics and a lot of pullbacks and also cases. And this is our Octade application. I think um, you'll hear about it a little bit more later today. We have a lot of features, cases. We are showing lesion morphology, not only as a picture, but we have videos, a lot of explanations. And uh, I think the most popular um, feature is quizzes, it's 60 questions, uh, quizzes. And um, if you would like to learn imaging, I actually heard this from some people, they just go straight to quizzes because it's 60 questions and we explain everything. We explain correct um, answers, incorrect answers. So when you go through quizzes, you pretty much already have an idea. Uh, you can see how many people um, took quizzes and this is only the website. This is the website version. We also have, of course, mobile application. I think these numbers are probably much larger. Case reviews, and we just added six new cases because we are trying to add new techniques. As you heard today from Jessica about IVL, um, new technique, here it is. Uh, our case with everything explained, angel, angel, every OCT uh, image, pullback, everything. Everything is here. Please uh, go um, uh, check this application out. This compared, these are all our applications and by uh, the number of downloads, it's number two after Bifurcate, which is very hard to beat, of course, but <laughs> we are trying. And we are working on iVoS 8, will be coming soon, uh, application for iVoS. Thank you very much for your attention.